Hello class, in this video, I will be discussing module 8, which will tackle the topic of thermodynamics, okay? So, ayan. What is thermodynamics and energy? Yung energy, di ba, na-discuss na natin sa previous videos or sa previous module. Ang thermodynamics is the science of energy. Ngayon, ano ba tong energy? It is the ability to do work or to cause changes, di ba? So, the name thermodynamics stems from the Greek word therme or heat. Ayan. Therme or heat and dynamis power. So, heat and power. Uh, conservation of energy principle, sabi niya, during an interaction, energy can change from one form to another but the total amount of energy remains constant or ito yung sinasabi na uh, energy can never be uh, energy is not created nor destroyed it can only be converted or change in forms okay energy cannot be created nor destroyed uh, it can only be transformed so for example itong uh, figure na yan, from potential energy, kasi di ba ang potential energy is meron kang height, okay, wala pa siyang kinetic kasi at rest, falling body, and then habang bumababa siya, yung potential niya bumababa since bumababa din yung height at yung kinetic ay tumaas. From zero naging three units kasi nagmumove na siya. So di ba ang kinetic energy is defined by the velocity of uh, the object, okay. So, ayan. And then, oh, meron tayong two classification of thermodynamics. Meron tayong statistical at meron tayong classical. When we say statistical, uh, it is devoted largely into reactions and solutions. Okay? Reactions and solutions, parang um, uh, chemistry. Okay? Uh, chem uh, reactions and solutions ng mga uh, chemical formulas, ganyan. At, at ang classical thermodynamics naman is concerned with the production and use of work and power. Okay? Thermodynamics. Classical thermodynamics is concerned with the production and use of work and power. Okay? So, meron din tayong two types of thermodynamic analysis. Meron tayong macroscopic at microscopic. Itong macroscopic from the word macro is the level on which we live in. Ito yung nakikita natin. It is concerned on the overall effect of the individual molecular interaction. The measurements are large compared with the measurement of events on the molecular level such as distance in meter, time in seconds. Okay? Ito yung nakikita. Na, uh, nakikita ng naked eye. Okay? Uh, napapansin o observe. Ang microscopic thermodynamics is nakafocus doon at, at every molecule and analyze collective molecular action by statistical methods. Okay? So, ito is, ito yung maliliit. Ito yung, uh, ang ino-observe is interactions of molecules. Okay? And then, ayan, meron tayo sa ther thermodynamics na tinatawag na system, boundary, at saka surroundings. When we say system, ito yung part ng universe or part ng uh, uh, galaxy na tinitignan natin yung ino-observe natin mismo. Okay? Ito yung tinatawag na system. So, for example, dito sa uh, dito, ang system natin is ito. So, ito yung uh, tinitignan natin, itong system na to, ito yung ino-observe natin kung anong nangyayari, kung anong, uh, anong heat niya, anong power niya, ganyan ito yung system. Pag sinabi naman nating boundary, it is an imaginary partition that separates the system from the surrounding environment. So, ang boundary, ito yung uh, parang imaginary uh, partition or yung naghihiwalay from the system to the surroundings. Ito namang surrounding is, uh, is the outside, okay, outside environment of the system that we are observing. Okay, kung Ito yung system natin, ito yung boundary, ito yung surroundings, okay? Yung paligid, okay? So, meron tayong uh, three types of system. Yung closed system, pag sinabi natin closed system, ito yun, okay? 
uh, a system where matter does not cross the boundaries. Okay, di ba? Hindi nagko-cross yung boundary kasi enclosed siya. Energy can pass through. Pwede yung energy, pwede yung, uh, pumasok yung heat, ganyan. Pero, pwede rin siyang lumabas. Pero yung mass, hindi pwedeng makapasok kasi enclosed nga siya. Uh, examples are piston cylinder assembly, eto, air in a balloon, and mercury in a thermometer and pressure cooker. Pag sinabi naman nating open system, eto ang open system. It is where matter and energy pass across its boundaries. Ayan, pwedeng pumasok yung mass, pwedeng pumasok ang energy, pwedeng lumabas, pwedeng lumabas ang mass, pwedeng lumabas ang energy. Eto yung boundary natin. Ito lang yung titignan natin. Okay? Ito yung system natin. And the rest is the surrounding. Okay? So, ganyan. Yun ang uh, open system. Pag isolated system naman, it, uh, it is where neither mass nor energy pass through its boundaries. Isolated. Walang makakapasok kahit energy, kahit mass, kahit ano. Okay? Ang egg Actually, wala, wala talagang perfect isolated system. Ang meron lang is partially. Ito yung thermos. Okay? Alam mo yung thermos ng tubig, di ba? Uh, di ba sa thermos is, uh, kumbaga, pinaprevent niya na lumamig. Okay? Lumamig yung mainit na tubig sa loob ng thermos. So, yung energy hindi nakakalabas or nakakapasok. Okay? Tapos, Uh, pero after ilang days is nawawala din yung uh, init nung mainit na tubig okay so partially isolated lang siya hindi siya tatagal okay so ayan okay so property and state okay meron tayong uh, definition of terms dito when we say pure substance okay uh, pag pure substance It is uniform in chemical composition, okay? Uniform uh, in com chemical composition, pare-pares nung laman, okay? When we say property, it is a characteristic quality of the entire system and depends not on how the system changes state but only on the final system state, okay? The property is a characteristic quality of the entire system and depends not on how the system changes. So, wala siyang pakialam kung ano yung Uh, dinaanan niyang process ang, ang tinitingnan lang niya is yung final system final state of the system okay? meron tayong two kinds of properties first is the intensive are properties that are independent, walang pakialam sa mass, sa size sa extent of the substance it also independent of the size of the system, example are temperature and temperature so ga kahit gaano kabigat, ga kahit gaano kalaki ang temperature at pressure ay hindi magbabago tama? pag sinabi naman nating extensive property ayan, extensive property these are properties that depend on the size or extent of the system so ito yung uh, nag nagbavary yung property depende sa size or yung laki sa bigat, examples are mass and volume Okay, di ba? Uh, kapag kapag lumalaki yung bagay, bumibigat siya. So, uh, nagbabago itong mass. Pag lumalaki yung bagay, lumalapad din. So, nagbabago yung volume. Pag lumiliit, magliliit din yung mass at saka yung volume. So, nakadepende siya. Okay? Yun ang tinatawag na extensive property. Ayan. So, eto, okay, kung meron tayong mass, volume, temperature, pressure, at saka density, okay, etong mass at saka volume, that is example of extensive, okay, kasi pag hinati mo yung mass, okay, mahati din yung properties, ayan, yung temperature, pressure, at saka density, kahit ano pa, gaano kalaki, same pa din yan, hindi magbabago. So, uh, ito naman state, it completely describe how the substance exists. Okay, state is parang din describe niya anong property nito, anong kulay, ganyan. Knowing the macroscopic properties, we can determine the state of a substance. Okay, ito yung state, ito yung uh, property niya, anong property nito sa ganitong condition. Ayan. Okay, yan yung ibig sabihin ng state. So, fundamental and derived units. Ito, I believe, na-discuss na natin sa unang uh, lecture, unang module. Fundament fundamental units are units that are postulated. Length is the distance between two points in space. 
Time is the period uh, between two events or during which something happens. Derived units are units formed from fundamental units. Pressure is force per unit area. Velocity is distance per unit time. Okay, so nare-review lang natin to. Uh, na-discuss na natin yan. Common macroscopic properties, mass, okay, is the absolute quantity of matter in a substance. It is invariant with location. The mass of the body is the substance. It's the same anywhere in the universe. So, 1 kilogram mass is equivalent to 2.2046 pound mass. 1 slug is equivalent to 32.174 pound mass. Volume, ayan. Conversion, I believe, uh, alam nyo na to kasi, di ba, pinamemorize natin ang conversion table. Okay, common macroscopic properties, uh, force, okay, alam mo na, is defined as the mass times acceleration. 1 unit is... 0.2248 pound force, 1 kilogram force is 9.8066 newton, 1 kilogram force is 2.2046 pound force. Uh, ito yung uh, acceleration natin, gravity. Okay. Uh, itong, GC, uh, itong GC na to is uh, pang convert, ba? 1 newton is equivalent to 1 kilogram meter per second squared. Okay. Ang 9.8006 uh, 9.8066 kilogram mass ay equivalent sa uh, equivalent sa uh, kilogram meter per second squared or newton then okay ayan so okay 9.8066 newton o yan 1 kilogram mass, 1 slug feet, uh, second squared pound force, 32.174 pound mass, feet per second squared. Okay. Ayan. So, ito is mga conversion lang. Okay. So, let's proceed. Common macroscopic properties. Okay. Sabi sa Newton's law states that the acceleration of a particle body is directly proportional to the resultant force acting on it and inversely proportional to its mass. Okay, alam na natin to that this is F is equals to MA. So, di ba F uh, is directly proportional to the mass and acceleration. So, ibig sabihin, meron tayong constant. F is equals to K MA. Kaya ang K natin is MA over F. Okay? Ayan. Or this is the... Sabi dito... Ang K is unity but not dimensionless. Okay, one dyne force accelerate one gram mass at one centimeter per second squared. One newton force accelerates one kilogram mass at one meter per second squared. One pound force accelerates one slug mass at one feet per second squared. Okay, so ayan. Ah, uh, ito ay dimensionless unit. Okay, and then. Okay. System of units where K is not unity if the same word is both for both mass and force in a given system. Okay, kung mapapansin nyo dito, ba? System of units where K is unity but not dimensionless. Ayan, no? One dyne force, one gram mass at one centimeter per second squared. Ngayon, kapag pareha, salba, one pound force accelerates one pound mass at 32.174 feet per second squared. Okay. 1 gram force accelerates 1 gram mass at 980.66 cm per second squared. 1 kilogram force accelerates 1 kilogram mass at 9.8066 meter per second squared. Okay? Ayan. Oh. So, ang, ang palatandaan natin, kapag uh, magkaiba yung unit, 1 dyne force accelerates 1 gram, ayan. Unit is sila, 1, 1, 1. 1, 1, 1. Newton force, 1 kilogram. Okay. Pero kapag magka parehas naman ng pangalan, pound force, naging pound mass lang, hindi siya unity or hindi siya 1. So, meron siyang equivalent. Uh, eto, pound force, pound mass, 32.174. Gram, 1 gram force, 1 gram mass is 980.66. 1 kilogram, 1 kilogram mass is 9.8066 meter per second squared. Okay. So, yan yung unity. So, ayan na siya. Ito na yung relation niya. Okay? 1 kilogram mass meter per second squared is equivalent sa 1 newton. Ang 9.8066 kilogram mass is uh, meter per second squared ay uh, 1 kilogram force. Okay? 
So, ang 1 kilogram force ay equivalent din sa 9.8066 newton. Okay. So, ito rin, uh, relation niya. 1 slug feet per uh, pound force. Okay. Second squared. So, ang key naman natin dito is 32.174 pound mass feet per second squared ay equivalent sa 1 pound force. So, ang 1 slug ay equivalent sa 9.8066 pound force. Okay. Ay, pound mass. Sorry. Ayan. One slug. I think this is 32. Okay. Malito. This is equivalent sa 32.174 pound mass. Okay. Ayan. Tama yan. Malitong, ano, malitong 9.8066. Okay. So, common macroscopic properties then is weight. Alam na natin to mg over gc. This gc is k or yung conversion lang. Density is uh, rho is equals to mass over volume. Okay, specific volume. And then specific weight. Okay, alam na natin yan. Specific gravity. Okay, specific gravity is density of substance over density of standard substance. Ayan. Sa water sa air, ay sa water sa SI, 62.4 naman sa English. Okay? So, pwede rin na weight in air is over weight in air minus weight in water. Okay? In a series of formulas. Okay. So, temperature. Okay? Punta tayo sa temperature. Uh, it is the measure of hotness and coldness of a body. It is a measure of the average linear kinetic energy of the molecules of the substance. That is, the total kinetic energy of all molecules divided by the number of molecules. So, it is the measure of hotness and coldness. Diba? Halimbawa, 0 degree Celsius ka, it is the measure of coldness. Diba? Kung gano'ng kakalamig. O kapag nag nag uminit ka naman kung gano'ng kakainit. Sabi sa zero law of thermodynamics. The zero law of thermodynamics state that when two bodies are in thermal equilibrium with a third body, they are in thermal equilibrium with each other and hence are at the same temperature. Okay? So, for example, pag sinabi nating thermal equilibrium, um, equal sila. Okay? Sabi niya kung halimbawa, Okay. Kung halimbawa, ito si A, B, C. Sabi niya, when two bodies are, halimbawa, ito ay with thermal equilibrium dito, itong C is with thermal equilibrium dito, ibig sabihin, at thermal equilibrium silang tatlo, pare-pare sila ng temperature. Yun ang sabi sa zero law of thermodynamics. At kung mapapansin nyo, meron tayong table dito, sabi niya, sa Kelvin, ang steam point or boiling point natin ay 373.15. Ang triple point of water natin ay 273.16. Ang ice point natin ay 273.15. Okay, absolute zero. Okay, ang degree Celsius is 100. 0.01 ang triple point of water. Ice point is zero. Uh, negative 273.15 ang absolute zero. Ang Rankine naman, 671.67 ang boiling point. Ang ice point natin is 491.67, absolute Zero degrees F at uh, one two thirty two point zero two ang triple point thirty two ang ice point negative four fifty nine point sixty seven ang absolute zero. Ang tatandaan lang natin this usually dito guys is yung boiling point at saka yung freezing point. Okay. Ayan. So, anong gagawin natin? Meron tayong formula here. Okay. So, for example, magko-convert tayo ng degrees Celsius to, uh, let's say, Fahrenheit. Okay? Fahrenheit. Ngayon, okay, uh, let's say, for example, mag, uh, kumuha tayo ng, uh, let's say, ang temperature natin ay X degrees Celsius para natin gagawing degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? Ayan. Okay. So, let's name na Y degrees Fahrenheit. So, X degree Celsius minus yung freezing point. Ang uh, freezing point ng Celsius ay 0. Ayan, 0. Over, boiling point niya is 100. At ang 
freezing point niya is 0. Ayan o, freezing point, boiling point, minus freezing point equals. Co-convert natin sa y. Okay, minus freezing point ng y ay uh, freezing point niya ay 32. Okay, over ang boiling point niya is 212 minus 32. Ang kukunin natin is y. Okay, yung y. Okay, so y is y degrees f. Okay, is equivalent sa um, Okay, simplify muna natin Ito is magiging x over 100 Okay, equals y minus 32 212 minus 32 is 2, 1, ay sorry 212 minus 32 ay equivalent sa 180. Okay, 180. Okay, kunin natin yung y degrees f. y degrees f ay equivalent sa 180 over 100. Diba? 180, 180x, 180x over 100 plus 32. Okay? So, ano ba ang 180 over 100? 180 divided by 100 okay that is 9 over 5 so c si degrees e eh, y degrees f ay equivalent daw sa 9 over 5 ah uh, x degrees celsius plus 32 okay so di ba if you remember eto na yung eto na yung conversion formula na degrees f is equivalent to 9 over 5 degrees celsius plus 32 Diba? Ito na yun. Okay. So, dito siya nakuha. Ang tawag dito ay interpolation. Okay. Interpolation. So, ganun lang yung gagawin nyo, guys. You have to memorize the freezing point, the boiling point, of the two uh, units na kailangan mo i-convert. Okay? At tandaan nyo rin na ang delta C, ang delta C, okay, ang delta C ay equivalent sa delta K, Ang delta F ay equivalent sa delta R. Ang 1 delta C ay equivalent sa 1.8 delta F. Okay? Ayan. So, let's proceed to the next. Ayan. Okay. I believe na discuss na rin to. Pressure is the force exerted by fluid per unit area. Pressure is equals to force over area. Pag sinat pag sinabi nating absolute uh, pressure, di ba? Atmospheric. Ito yung atmospheric natin. Um, absolute. Ayan. Atmospheric plus the gauge. Okay. Kung ito yung atmospheric natin, okay, plus the gauge. Pag uh, vacuum naman, atmospheric, kung ito yung atmospheric natin, and then vacuum, minus the vacuum. Okay. O, so, kung ito yung gauge pressure, ito yung atmospheric. Atmos absolute value eh, absolute pressure is equivalent to at atmospheric plus the gauge or atmospheric minus vacuum okay negative gauge so common properties okay atmospheric pressure sabe is the pressure associated with the atmosphere due to the weight of air although this pressure varies according to location and weather patterns an average value at sea level is 101.325 kPa. So, standard atmospheric pressure, meron tayong 1 atm or atmosphere is equals to 101.325 kPa or 1.0135 bar, 760 mmHg, 14.7 psi, and 29.92 inches mercury. Okay? So, sa gauge pressure naman, Sabi niya ang gauge pressure is the amount by which pressure differs from the atmospheric pressure. This is measured with a gauge that measures the pressure uh, above or below the atmospheric pressure. The gauge pressure below atmospheric is called vacuum. Absolute pressure, okay. Although there is no limit to how high a pressure can be, there is a limit to how low it can be. This point of absolute minimum is the absolute zero pressure, no pressure at all. Absolute pressure is pressure measured above this zero point, okay. So, absolute zero from zero talaga. Okay. Ayan.
So, ito na-discuss na rin sa fluid mechanics, ba? Diba? So, paano natin kukunin yung uh, pressure nito? For example, ito yung hinahanap, okay? ba diba? P gauge, okay, equals, itong fluid na to, oh, so, dahil pababa yung height natin, okay, pababa yung height natin, let's say, for example, ito, ayan, pababa siyang ganyan, okay, diba? Tapos aakyat ulit, tapos aakyat ulit. So, ito, at saka ito ay equal lang, ito pa-negative, ito pa-positive, so magka-cancel lang silang dalawa. And then, ito, susunod is yung height, all positive height, so rho GH, okay? So, for example, ah, oh, i-discuss uh, natin one by one. So, for example, this is, um, Let's say, for example, this is A, okay, and this is B, okay, and then, um, okay, height A. So, bababa si P gauge, okay, so, rho G, negative A, tapos bababa pa ulit siya, okay, plus rho G, negative B, okay, Tapos, aakyat ulit siya. From here, aakyat ulit siya ng B. Plus, rho G, B positive na. Plus, rho G, A positive then And then, plus, rho G, H. Okay? So, ito magka-cancel. Ito magka-cancel. Ito na lang yung matitira. So, ganun siya, ha? Okay. So, kung dito naman yung hinahanap. Okay? Diyan naman yung hinahanap natin. Um, from here... Okay, aakyat siya, ba? Diba? So, let's say, for example, this is A and this is B. So, aakyat siya. Uh, P gauge, okay, equals. Uh, rho G A positive, paakyat, okay. Plus, rho G B positive, paakyat. Then, bababa siya ulit kasi kailangan niya bumaba eh. ba diba? Papunta doon. So, bababa ulit siya ng uh, rho G B minus. Tapos, bababa ulit siya ng rho G A. Rho G A. Okay, kasi di ba pares lang yung height nito okay, and then minus rho g h so ito magka-cancel so ang matitira sa p gauge natin is negative rho g h okay, so ganun lang sya kasimple okay? so susundan mo lang p gauge yung hinahanap kung saan pressure yung hinahanap and then puntahan mo yung dulo, yung kabila okay? so ganun sya so, let's proceed. Ayan, sample problems na tayo. How much mass is there up approximately in 1 liter of mercury? So, mass. 1 liter of mercury. Meron tayong density is equals to mass over volume. Ang hinahanap is mass. Mass is equals to rho v. Ano ba ang density ng mercury? That is 13,550. Okay? This is kilogram per meter cube. Okay, so mass is equals to 13,550 kilogram per meter cube times volume na 1 liter. 1 liter, convert natin, gawin natin meter cube, meron tayong 1,000 liter sa 1 meter cube. So, ayan, um, 13,550 divided by 1,000. So, meron tayong 13.55. So, ang mass natin ay cancel to. Cancel. Meron tayong 13.55 kilogram. Okay. So, that is how you answer sample problem number 1. Let's proceed to number 2. A manometer shows a pressure of difference. Pressure difference of 1 meter of liquid mercury. Find it in KPA, okay? Sabi niya, 1 meter Hg, okay? Yung conversion kanina, meron tayong um, Okay, okay, okay. 1 meter Hg. Diba, ang pressure is equivalent sa uh, rho Gh, okay? 
um, eto yung um, rho GH. Okay, sabi niya, 1 meter of liquid mercury or pwede rin natin i-convert. 1 meter mercury, di ba? Um, sa 1 meter, meron tayong 1,000 mm. Okay. So, meron tayong 1,000 mm HG. Okay. Tapos, ang um, ayan, 1,000 mm HG. So, sa 1 meter. And then, um, mali, mali, mali. Dapat parehas pala. So, so 1 m HG. Sa so 1 m HG, meron tayong 1,000 m m HG. Okay? And then, if you remember, meron tayong 760 m m HG. Ito yung atmospheric pressure. Equivalent niya ng 101.325. Diba? So, pag pag nag-convert tayo 1 times 1,000 times 101.325 over 760 equals 133 ayan equivalent to 133.32 kPa by kPa okay so, that is how you answer number 2. So, let's proceed. Okay. Number 3. You dive 5 meters down in the ocean. What is the absolute pressure there? Okay. So, kung halimbawa. Okay. Ito yung uh, ocean. Ito yung ocean. Ito, syempre, atmospheric pressure. Okay. Tapos, magda-dive ka ng 5 meters. Okay. So, ay, sorry. Yan. So, atmospheric absolute is equivalent sa atmospheric plus gauge. Ito, gauge to, gauge. Gauge. So, let's say ang atmospheric natin ay 101.325 kPa. Ang gauge natin, di ba? Gauge is equivalent sa rho GH. Okay? Rho GH. Plus Okay, 1,000 times 9.80 and then height na 5 meters. Okay, so solve natin. Uh, KPA to, ito is nakapascal kasi ito ay kilogram per meter cube. Isin natin. 1,000 kilogram per meter cube uh, 9.8 meter per second squared and then height na 5 meters so ang lalabas dito ay kilogram tama ba? okay kilogram meter per second squared okay Okay, so, um, ito ay nakapascal. So, uh, pascal, gagawin natin kilo pascal, divide natin ng 1,000. Okay, so, 101.325, oh, 1, para naging pascal pala to explain lang natin ha, ito ay newton. Okay, ayan, newton. And then, meter, may matitirang meter squared dito. So, meter squared. Newton per meter squared ay Pascal. Newton per meter squared. So, kailangan natin siyang gawing uh, kilo Pascal. Kaya magdi-divide tayo ng 1,000 kasi 1,000 Pascal ay equivalent sa uh, kilo Pascal. So, ayan, 101.325 plus magka-cancel na lang yung 1,000. So, 9.8 times 5. 
150. So 150 kPa. Okay. So that is the answer. 150.325. Next is um, what pressure difference does 10 meter column of atmospheric air show? Okay, 10 meter column. Oh, so, tingnan natin na P is equals to rho GH. Uh, P is equals to rho. Ang density ng air is 1.2 kilogram per meter cube. 9.8 meter per second squared. At ang height niya ay 10 meter. So, ito ay nakapascal. Uh, 1.2 times 9.8 times 10. This is equivalent to 117.6 Pascal. Okay, 117.6 Pascal. Gawin natin kilo Pascal. Uh, 1,000 Pascal is 1 kPa divided by 1,000. So, that is equivalent sa 0.12. Okay, pinakamalapit. 0.12 kPa. So, let's proceed to the next. Ayan, a laboratory room keeps a vacuum of 0.1 kPa. What net force does the, that put on the door size 2 meter by 1? So, alam naman natin na pressure is equals to force over area. Meron tayong 0.1 kPa. Gawin natin siyang Pascal. 1 kPa is 1,000 Pascal. Equivalent sa force na hinahanap. And then, area na 2 by 1 meter squared. So, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 times 1,000 times 2, of course. Okay, that is equivalent to 200 Newton. Okay, so next, let's proceed to the next example. Um... A tornado rips off a 100 meter squared roof with a mass of 1,000 kilogram. What is the minimum vacuum pressure needed to do that if we neglect the anchoring forces? Okay, what is the... Uh, ang hinahanap is the pressure. Pressure is equals to force over area. Ang force natin dito malamang is the mass or the weight. So, 1,000 kilogram times 980 meter per second squared and then meron tayong area na 100 meter squared so ang pressure natin is 1000 times 9.8 divided by 100 98 okay this is pascal 98 pascal times 1000 Pascal 1 kPa so divided by 1000 so 0 0.098 kPa okay so that ends our part 1 for thermodynamics thank you very much guys